and welcome to Epiphytic Cacti. I just built this terrarium over the holidays. It took about a week. I wanted to plant epiphytic cacti in it. So you can see that the whole entire terrarium is already planted, but I saved the epiphytic cacti so that we could do it together because I thought it was kind of a cool thing. I also thought that it might be kind of interesting just because, you know, I see a lot of people build terrariums, build tropical terrariums, and they don't use a whole lot of epiphytic cacti when there's some epiphytic cacti that I think are absolutely fantastic for a terrarium in a way that I think that most people may not realize. So I wanted to do that today. I do want to talk a little bit about how I did the terrarium, but I don't want to spend too much time on that. I'm not a terrarium expert. This is an Ikea Millsbow cabinet. It is just shy of six feet tall, just a little over two feet wide and a little over one foot deep. This tree is actually something that we call diamond willow, but it's what it is really is just willow that has been infected with like a fungus and the fungus creates these diamond patterns. And so over Christmas, when I went home to my parents and spent Christmas with my family, my oldest brother lives next door to my parents and he's very naturey. He's very much kind of a hands-on buildery type person. And he has a homestead there. I wanted him and his family to go out with me for Christmas and get some diamond willow. We went out, we got some pieces of diamond willow. I brought them back with me and then I carved the bark off. Then I got a Dremel and I used the Dremel to carve the diamonds out. There's a piece of it that is one giant part of a tree, but then some of the branches are actually put in there. And so it just sort of looks like one big giant tree. And then my youngest brother, I had him buy me some shale and stuff like that. So I use the shale pretty extensively in this terrarium. There's pieces of shale that are actually in the wall. They're little rock ledges. Then I used Great Stuff Expanding Foam Black to foam the tree in and then create kind of the background. The only thing where there is a container that's foamed in is up there at the top. That's because there's a fogger in there. There is a hole that's drilled at the top where all of the cords run out. There's a Barina grow light up there at the top. And then I have two of these standing grow lights on the sides. There's a big computer fan up there in the back for air circulation. And this protrusion over here was done. It doesn't have a container in there or anything, but it was done because I carved in a stream and there's a water pump that's underneath the shale and the water line runs up the side and then the water comes down and it comes out here and it's not carved all the way but I kind of guided the water where I wanted it because there are some shale cliffs that are right there and so the water falls onto those shale cliffs it drips off I need to work on that a little bit just because the splashing is an issue so it might not splash now that I have the moss down on the shale but it holds water there are one of the glass shelves that goes inside of the cabinets was put in the front here and so this whole front part holds water but it's not filled right now it's just not filled there's not all that water in there because most of these plants were not coming from a super humid environment and so I didn't really want them to just tank because all of a sudden they're in this environment that is just excessively humid. On top of the foam, in some places I use silicone and put tree fern fiber. And in other places I used fluval stratum or aqua soil and basically like put that on the wall. And then on top of that, stuck some tree fern fiber. I had always planned to pin green sphagnum moss, so dried green sphagnum moss onto the foam all, all throughout the thing. And that is what I did. So there is a couple of different types of substrates going on. And then on top of that, some live moss that I collected is pinned all over. So most of what you see is actually live moss, but some of it is also dried moss. I highly recommend the green dried moss just because it will create kind of a, you know, nice look right away. So it depends on what you're going for, really. But like, I was going for green wall, right? And I got a green wall, which is, that's exactly what I was going for. And then I planted a bunch of different things in there. Some of the stuff that I planted, I just planted because I had it. It was around the house. There is some 
Monstera in there. I purchased that from a nursery. A bunch of different begonias. Also, there is a Schlumbergera lutea right there that I bought from Andy's Orchids. And it comes mounted already. And so that I bought quite a while ago. I had it outside over the summertime. When it came in, I put it in the biorb and you know, it's been fine. It's been doing really well. The Hoya I already had, and that's my favorite Hoya, Hoya Kachizii. So I took some little cuttings of that Hoya and then I put that in there to grow down that on that branch, more like an epiphytic plant, how it would kind of grow in nature. The ferns I bought from, some of them I got from Home Depot and some of them I got from a local nursery, but they're fabulous. And I would say that ferns is probably like the number one thing that I would plant in a terrarium just to make it look fantastic quickly. So this has given me kind of a lot of options just for being able to grow certain things that I've never been able to grow that I think are fantastic and beautiful. And then there is another epiphytic cacti in there, Salish Jungari. Now we're going to plant this together with the exception of that Bradii because it was already mounted and that Ripsalis Jungari. The reason why that Ripsalis Jungari is in there is if you watch my channel, you'll know that I have had a horrible time with this plant. <laughs> I've had it twice. The first time took an entire year before it decided to grow anything. It would not root. It was a horrible struggle. It just now started growing. It's the saddest little thing. I even tried to graft it and it just didn't really work right. It was just a terrible experience all around. And then I had received another Ripsalis jungari, a really big one, and it was growing really well, like a big cutting, not a big plant. And it was doing really, really well up until it came inside. And then it basically just sort of like crashed and burned and the stem that was rooted, it rotted and it was just a total mess. So I had taken the pieces out and I put them in these cloches and, and tried to root them and one of them took and the other one did not. And I think I kind of did a little weird experiment when I did this. FYI, don't do experiments on precious plants. <laughs> like, don't ask me why I did this. You know, if I watered one versus just sort of watered the bottom of the other one, kept the humidity up, what would happen? The one that I watered rooted. <laughs> the one that I just did not, it just did not. So I finally was just like, okay, I'm so sick and tired of this. Like one of these is rooted. One of them is doing fine. The other one sucks. And so I'm going to put that one in the terrarium because it's got a better chance. Hopefully that just works out and that will grow in there okay. And then the air plants, they were really beautiful. They came from a local nursery. I thought it was really interesting because some of these air plants were colored and I've never seen that before. Like the reddish colors, the peaches colors, purple colors is really pretty. And then I bought some for the bio orbs because I replanted the bio orbs. I only replanted the bio orbs for the isopods though. I bought springtails and put springtails in there and then I bought fancy isopods. So isopods, in case you don't know, are like pill bugs or potato bugs. And what they do is they sort of like eat leaf litter and stuff. Um, so they eat decaying matter. And they so they keep everything kind of clean. And then the springtails will eat like mold and, you know, fungus, like things that you don't really want growing in your terrarium. And then I bought two other kinds of fancy isopods. And I meant them to go in the bio orbs, but it meant that I had to replant the bio orbs. So I ended up having to replant the bio orbs, but I did it like very quick and dirty. I wasn't trying to make like this beautiful, like beautifully escape them. I just really wanted to, somewhere for the isopods to kind of be happy. I was not totally prepared for that. The living moss I collected from outside. Hopefully that moss is okay in there. I know that I've had the moss growing in bins in the house for quite a while now. And it's very humid in those bins. You know, they were also growing on sphagnum moss. The, you know, the humidity was very high and the moss was growing and thriving. So I don't think it will be such a big deal. Hopefully it just works out and it lives. The cabinet is weather stripped. And then I ordered a hydrometer to put in there. So I have some semblance of understanding how humid it is in there and the environment and stuff. I pulled some plants. I cut them from different places in the basement. And what we need to do is actually prep these. So this one here 
is Schlumbergera lutea subspecies lutea. And so that's one that we're going to plant in there. This one here, I don't quite know what it is. I bought it as Ripsalis cuneata, but I don't know if it's Ripsalis cuneata. I'm not entirely sure. Whoops, I just dropped it. It grows fairly small with the flat clade, so I figured that would be kind of a good one to do. And then this one here is Ripsalidopsis rosea. So this is a Ripsalidopsis species, has beautiful pink flowers. This one, I got cuttings of some um, species this past year, a friend sent them to me and they're doing really, really well. And I figured I would take a little cutting of this and put it in there. And then we've got just a little tiny cutting of Hadiora salicornioides, a plant that I really think is beautiful, so fun to watch grow. I know that it's very common. I still think it's beautiful. That doesn't really matter that much to me. So in order to prep these, what we actually need to do is make sure that there aren't any pests on them. And how I do that is I will use isopropyl alcohol. So this is 91%, it's pretty strong alcohol. And I will put it in a container, like a bowl here. So I've got like a little plastic bowl, or not plastic, paper bowl. And so there's alcohol in there. And then we'll just take them and we'll dunk them in there. And FYI, like if I ever send plants to people, this is what I do to them before I send them to people. If this had roots, you would not want to put the roots in the alcohol. But what will happen is if there's like mealy bugs or whatever on there, it will get rid of the mealy bugs. It will kill them. And so it's just completely submerged in alcohol. And then basically we'll pull it out and set it on a paper towel to dry. And we will do the same thing with all of them. So we just put it in there, get it completely submerged, completely covered. Mealy bugs is my biggest problem pest, so that would be what I would be most concerned about is the mealy bugs. I mean, in those little critters, like, they can get into anything and everything, and that's the reason for submerging these and not just spraying them. So this one's here a little bit difficult because this one's shaped a little bit differently. And then these aren't all the plants that we're going to plant in. I actually have to go get a few more small things. I am going to water this. And the smell when I open this cabinet is absolutely fantastic. It just smells like, we always say that it smells like rain, but the truth is, is that it actually smells like earth and decaying matter that is wet. <laughs> so <laughs> it sounds much better to say that it smells like rain than it smells like wet decaying matter is such a lovely smell. <laughs> that's terrible. But the truth is, is that that's kind of what it is. You know, it's just like wet earth, really. And it's a lovely, lovely smell. I really, really love the smell. And what's crazy is that when I open the cabinet, I can just absolutely smell this it like permeates my whole bedroom and even kind of goes trickles downstairs so i use a pump sprayer like this and so i just come along and spray this and it actually takes quite a bit of spraying it's not something where you know it's a real like a light spray you really kind of have to come in here and really sort of spray things down I don't know if I'm supposed to water the air plants this way. Not sure about the air plants really, because I think that if water gets into the crown of the air plants, it can actually rot it. I don't know if it will have that problem in the terrarium though. Okay, so to prepare these, for planting in the terrarium, what I have here is this mixture. It is tree fern fiber, um, aqua soil or fluval stratum, horticultural charcoal, 
and um, geolite. And then I have these tea bags. These are like completely natural tea bags here. So I have these tea bags like this. And they've got, I drink loose tea sometimes, so I have these tea bags hanging around. <laughs> Um, and a little spoon and where I'm just gonna take some of the stuff. And so it should be nice and loose like that. And then some of these are gonna be a little bit different. Like here are these Daiso cactus seedlings that I wanted to put in here. So this is a seedling of a Daiso cactus species. This one is Daiso cactus quizelticus. And you can see that I cleaned off the roots somewhat. And then you can, I dumped the top part or dunked the top part in alcohol. And that again, just to get rid of any mealy bugs if there are any on there, because the mealy bugs really, really, really like seedlings. Then we're just gonna put the seedling in there. And this one, I think we're gonna tear down a little bit because I don't want like a whole bunch of substrate in there. There we go. There we go. So we're gonna go like that. And then we're gonna put more substrate in there. Like that. Now, I don't know if these will survive because I'm obviously kind of putting them through quite a bit of a ringer here for this, but I mean, they should. Usually seedlings are really resilient. Maybe kind of cut it like that. I really only needed to cut one side of that, but whatever. And then just fold it down and get that guy out of there enough so that just his roots are in there. There we go. So just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it. So we have to find a little home for this somewhere. And I have wire, if necessary, to actually wire these on. He said, only if I really need to, though. So I can pick, like, a nook. Like, there is a nook right here. So I could pick, like, that nook and kind of tuck it in there like that. And that one's kind of a cool nook because I can kind of sort of get it even into the wall a little bit. And we'll just let it hang down like that. And then we'll spray, we'll, we'll have to come in and spray those afterwards. Um, but that's what I mean, like if I need to tie it down and then in terms of sort of hiding the, the tea bag, I can put some moss just on top of it and that will actually hide it. Now I imagine over time, these will break down these tea bags um, and that's okay. I think by that time, they'll probably be fairly rooted. So this one is also a seedling of Daiso cactus nelsoni, or nelsonii, I'm not really sure which. And so we need to find a nook for this one too. So where, where? I think this is the kind of funny part, which is like, where is a nook? <laughs> Oh, there's kind of like an interesting hidden nook back here. Probably not really going to be able to see it if we put it in there. Because it would be behind a fern. So you can see right there, there is a nook right on top of this where we can just slip that right in there like that. And so he's going to kind of be behind the fern. But he's in there. So he's just hidden away. <laughs> we could trim that fern to kind of get that out a little bit more, but...
There we go. There we go. Now we can see it. And so again, we can just put some moss on there to cover those things up. And then let's do these. Now we have one Ripsalis Lindbergiana. And I want this one like up higher here. So probably going to put it like either maybe here. Just super pretty. Or here. Ooh, which is also really pretty. I think we're going to put it here. Let me lift up my little vine there. There we go. And again, you can hide the bags with some moss. You can also, like that one, I'd be a little bit worried about falling. So I do have like this wire here where it's just a very thin wire. It's what I use to actually put everything um, into the background and sort of fasten everything. So it's just some really thin wire. And then if I go in there, I just sort of put the wire around it and then just twist it. And then bend the wire in there so that I don't hurt myself. But this is just fantastic. I feel like this plant was just made to be in a terrarium. <laughs> and I feel like, like I said, it's one of those things that I think that terrarium builders should use this more often. And we have another one here. So... I pulled those out and then I split it evenly. So there's actually two. And this does grow really fast. It's a pretty resilient plant. And it does grow really fast. Um, when it starts growing, you know, it really just sort of takes off. But that's okay in here. Because even though it grows fast, it's still like a vertical you know, a skinny vertical noodle, essentially. And so the other one, I feel like probably go up here. That nook. There. Fabulous. There we go. So we have jungle vines that are actually alive <laughs> and not, you know, the other jungle vines that I made, these are not really, these are just rolled in dried moss. Again, you can just put some moss over that, it's fine. Um, and then we have some of these other guys. So, where do we want to put this guy? I'm trying to figure out where we should put this guy. Maybe here. There's a nice nook right here. Oh yeah. That's nice. Yeah, so maybe in there like that, and then just kind of grow down. I guess I could have put them on the other side there. I kind of like that. So some of these are a little bit different because this one is woody. It actually means that I can just poke it into here like that. You might need a little bit more support or 
Okay. You can cut that and wrap it around there so he stays. I think the hardest part is really just getting them to stay in their little pockets when you poke them in like that. There. go. There. Now we've got that lutea. So what are we going to do with this lutea? So one of the things that I will say about uh, Schlumbergera lutea, subspecies lutea or subspecies bradii, is the way that this roots, you really only want the very tip of it to actually be touching whatever substrate you're trying to root it in. Otherwise, it has just a real tendency to rot. It's very, very easy to rot this. So I think Just trying to figure out if I can actually put it on the same. I think it would be really cute if it was actually growing on the same piece of bark as the other one is growing on. We could maybe just do that. So I want as little of that to touch as humanly possible there. But there's like some moss that's on that little thing. But you know, I wonder if I can't get underneath the moss like on the other side. Let me pull this off. This is actually just hooked on there. Oh, look at that. There's a little piece of fishing line. So maybe and just go like that. Let me put that. Yeah, that's perfect. That is exactly perfect. Here we go. Fabulous. Fabulous. All right. So now we're going to do that little piece of Aurea here. This little piece, which is like not really alive. <laughs> I mean, it's alive, but it's not rooted. It's very desiccated. But in my experience with this one, it does have a tendency to root fairly easily. So I'm trying to figure out where exactly I want this. I feel like I have a plan for this nook right here. I have something that needs to go there. So I'm wondering if I shouldn't put it there. That's pretty. Okay, now to get it wired in there. First, and we'll cut it. There we go. Wow, I'm just... Okay, I don't like that. Okay. We've got this little... Our little salicornioides. Where to put it? Where to put it? <laughs> we could just poke it right out of one of the knots. <laughs> we won't do that. It won't actually stay in there. So this is kind of a brighter light plant. 
So I wonder if we actually kind of put it here in that nook. I feel like that's a good idea. All right, so I think we're gonna go up here. Um, no, actually, there's like a really cute pocket way over here. Here's how I'm going to try this one. Kind of wired it down there. I don't really want to damage that, but let's see about that. Hmm. There's like a big nook back here. I don't know if you can see that. You can see some black foam in there. I think. Could. All right, I think that'll work. It's kind of precariously poked in there. We can't really see it. There's some moth in the way. But I think that's cute, tucked away back in there. All right. And then I think the last one. At least for today. <laughs> I have a feeling like this is going to get a little more epic than this, but you know. Yes. Some wire. There. That is exactly what I wanted. I think that is perfect. I mean, besides having to go through and now cover up all of those sections with moss, <laughs> really cool epiphytic cacti. And I just really, like, I really, really think, I know that I keep saying this, but I just really, really think that some of these are really, really underrepresented as terrarium plants. Like, the way that these are hanging here, you know, we go through a huge process to, I think, try to make something like that in the terrarium when there are plants that can readily do that. This is definitely is not the only plant. Like Ripsalis isn't even like the only genus that can readily do that. So I think that it's just something that when I was working on the terrarium, I realized, you know, like, oh, wow, there are some Ripsalis that would be very, very interesting in these terrariums as like vines you know even though they don't so they don't actually vine like they won't wrap around things they'll just hang down like that but what they will do is actually like climb on a branch and they will hang down like a curtain in the wild like particularly Ribsalis lindbergiana will do that um, I don't know how it will grow in here I don't know what it will do but I definitely Definitely think that it looks amazing in here. And then Ripsalis campus Botuana down there too. I think like a really large one kind of going down. And if you know how these grow, how interesting that could be, how interesting that could get. Um, some of the other Ripsalis I put in here just out of curiosity to see what they would do. I think Hadiora salicornioides. I definitely intentionally put uh, Schlumbergera lutea, subspecies lutea in here. Definitely wanted to see what that one looked like. And I mean, I think that there is a couple of other things that could definitely go in here. There are a lot of Ripsalis that can actually grow like that in those like hanging things. Some of them are really interesting. 
Some of them are a little bit shorter. You know, some of the terrariums, you could have some really fantastic Rupsalis in them, especially on a much bigger scale. You could really get some very, very interesting things going. All right, so now that I've covered up all of the tea bags with moss, you can see here, it's covered with moss and you can't even really tell. So, you know, there I covered up the top of the mounting stick for Schlumbergera lutea with some moss. And then here, There we can see Rupsalis aurea is covered. Over there we can see Hadiora salicornioides is covered. We go way up there, you can see that that's how that's covered. And it really doesn't look all that unnatural with the moss just kind of like tucked in there like that. It's like a weird moss ball has just emerged out of a tree somehow, mystically. And then there, can't even really see that one either. And then if we look at, gosh, I can't even see them. There it is. <laughs> I'm like, ah, I can't even see those. So there's one of the seedlings. I think that that one is Dysogactus quizelticus. And you can see the tea bag is just covered with moss and it's just kind of dangling down. The same thing with the other one that's down here. There he is right there. And then and try to look. This one was probably the hardest one to cover and the one that I didn't do the greatest job because it's so nestled back in there. It's just really hard to even see. <laughs> so, I mean, I kind of covered it with moss, <laughs> but that's what it looks like. So it's really pretty cool just to kind of cover it up. You know, the tea bag's just covered with the moss. We spray the moss you know, the tea bag. I think that the key is just gonna be trying to get it so that it's not so wet, the tea bag. Um, but it's extremely loose, loose substrate. So, but we still don't want it to be like soaking, soaking wet constantly. Um, I also put the, <laughs> put the air plants back on. So I don't know about how those air plants are fastened. Seems like I maybe have to find a different way to fasten those because I just hot glued them on. But when the air plant gets wet, the hot glue doesn't really stick to the air plant anymore. So I don't know. I'm going to have to do a little research and figure out is there a different way to mount these. I can wire them on. I just didn't really want to wire them on. I just thought hot glue would be kind of ideal. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But I'm really excited just to sort of have this thing all planted and finished. And, you know, now I can just watch it and watch for my isopods. <laughs> so those little isopods, man, they just sort of vanish everywhere. But I'll keep the channel updated and sort of how they do, you know, if the Ripsalis rod or if I decide to like change out or add more Ripsalis in there because I do really love the way that those Ripsalis look just hanging down like that. I think it's absolutely just so cool. Just the idea of sort of having them, some of them kind of growing in the way that maybe they would normally grow in nature instead of, you know, having them in the pots and stuff and just seeing what they do, how they behave. I think it'll be so interesting for me. I hope you've enjoyed looking at this terrarium with me. I will keep you updated. As things progress, thank you for watching, and as always, happy cacti growing.